For their debut concert here in Toronto at the concert hall, fans have been queued up outside for two or three hours. The fans of Iron Maiden are, like most heavy metal fans, very devoted, and that's part of what makes the band work. They love to party. They're heavy metal rock and roll. It's fantastic. I was looking for something different. I was tired with fans like Rush and Nugent and stuff like that, and these guys offer something different, and it's uh, what I want, I guess. It gets me totally like out of problems at school or whatever, right? It's so like everybody gets buzzed and stuff. It's good. Yeah. Rock and roll, headbanging. Get out and have a good time. Iron Maiden likes to stay close to their fans, and drummer Clive Burr came outside for a while to talk to the crowd. What do you like about Iron Maiden? I like them because they put out heavy metal, no garbage disco, no new wave, nothing! Nothing but heavy metal! This man talks some sense. There you go. <laughs> I like it because I'm in There you go. I'm embarrassed now. derive their name from the ancient medieval instrument of torture, and within the heavy metal crowd, their razor-sharp riffs are the latest word in musical torture. The band was started in London in 1977 by bass player Steve Harris, who once tried out for West Ham United, one of the UK's first division soccer clubs. While most of his time is spent on the road with Iron Maiden, Harris still enjoys a good game of football. And before their gig at the concert hall, we got together for a pickup game with a team that included Rick Emmett of Toronto's Heavy Metal Triumph, Matt Minglewood of the East Coast Minglewood Band, and Sonny from the Rockabilly Bobcats. Although Harris is a good player, scoring seven of the game's goals, he wasn't quite good enough to make the UK's professional teams. And after a while, found out that that wasn't what he was after anyways. But whether it be soccer or playing in a band, it was a way to escape the boredom of East End London. You know, it's amazing to be sitting here, like, you know, I'm in Canada, Christ, I never would have had a chance to come to Canada if, if I didn't sort of get in a band. And I think that's what a lot of young guys can relate to, you know, they'd like to either be a professional footballer and travel over wherever or playing a rock band or something like that, you know. So maybe um, just a chance to break down to something different, perhaps, you know. How does it feel, this being your first time over here, you've only got a couple of records released in North America, yet you have this incredible following, all these friends? Well, it's amazing, really. I mean, you don't expect, when you, f when you first go to a, a country, you know, we, we expect you to kind of uh, go back and, and, like, when we was first in Britain playing pubs and stuff, you know, building up right from the roots, we expected to maybe do that, you know, from a roots level everywhere. But uh, in a way, it's made it a little bit easier for us because we're coming over here and, and we're playing to, you know, probably a sold out concert tonight, which first time in is pretty amazing. I mean, it seems the promotion guys up front must have done their work, I suppose. But uh, I, I suppose it just shows that there's a lot of kids everywhere in the world that want to hear every rock. And that's what it is, you know. And maybe there's some new bands instead of some of the older bands. <laughs> You started the band probably uh, what was right in the middle of the punk rock explosion over in the UK. Uh, what was it like trying to start up a band during that time? <laughs> well, it was near impossible really, to get gigs, you know, because a um, little fashion thing, like, and it, it was the big thing happening on the club scene. All the large established bands were still playing a lot of gigs, but it was out there for young new bands to break through because the punk thing really sort of, London is the, seems to be the place where all the fashion is, isn't it? We just couldn't get work. We ended up getting like one gig a week in a local pub. But, and that was, you know, that was great, you know, because it just helped us play, play at least once a week. I mean, you just got to play, so one gig a week was, uh, you know, really good for us at the time. Right? Then we done a demo tape, 
and uh, all that around. And a guy called Neil Kay was at the bandwagon in, in North London, a lot of heavy metal uh, rock clubs sort of playing uh, rock stuff. He played the tape, and we got us quite a lot of recognition from that. People were sort of phoning us up and saying, you know, who's this band and all this sort of stuff. Something that has become synonymous with Iron Maiden is the uh, the logo that you have. Can you explain that? Uh, we all started out, we used to have a small back job with uh, like a face, and we used to call it Eddie the Eight, you know, just a nickname we gave it. And uh, when, when we started doing the album, uh, we'd got an artist in, and he just got, kind of expanded on that, and we call the thing Eddie now. I just think it's rubbish, because, right, as I said, all our influences are from older bands. And um, new wave, I don't know if there is anything new, really, because, right, it's the same sort of music, it's just that we, all it is is we've just grown up you know, liking it a little bit faster now. I suppose that's the only sort of comparison with New Wave, we play faster. But basically, we've still got the same ideals, apart from we're not into the big rock star image. Because, like, we keep very close to our fans because we've always seen it, that they've put us where we are today anyway. So, you know, you repay devotion with devotion because I'd do anything for them kids because they've put me where we are today. The venue that you're doing here in Toronto is the concert hall, which is a standing room only gig, as opposed to playing the music hall, which is uh, sitting. Is that part of the attitude of Iron Maiden? Right, yeah, I don't like people sitting down. I, I don't know. See, um, the whole idea of, like, is let's have a good time. I don't think you can sit down and have a good time. Yeah. We just turn around and say, right, well, come on in, let's get down to it. Right, I'll have you all down the front, or we stop halfway if they're sitting down. Say, right, we won't play another note until you get up. What do you think of the real hardcore fans, the headbangers, and the people with their uh, cut-out guitars? Well, I think they're amazing because they're getting involved with the music, and, you know, it's just get up and go, forget everything. They're living out fantasies which is also what we're doing on stage, we're forgetting everything that's gone down before, like in the day before, just get up and play, forget everything, have a bit of fun. That's basically it. I love them for that, that's great. I mean, not scared to do it, which is really good. It leads other people into it as well. I think we're enjoying ourselves, let us go and do it as well. Since 77, there's been an incredible amount of new heavy metal bands coming out of the UK. Who are some of the people that you have respect for? Uh, Motorhead, um, yeah, they're, they're all right, actually, but I can never go and see Lemmy without him getting me absolutely blind drunk, <laughs> because we go out drinking man again. Oh, Christ, and he, he's unbelievable, that man. There's no way I could ever compete with him. He's, he's, he's unreal. Uh, yeah, we're all, I don't know, we're like friends, especially the London bands. See, Def Leppard from up north, the si of Saxon. So we only meet up occasionally. Well, us and Saxon meet up quite a bit, but, you know, we're all mates, have a few drinks and whatever. But I suppose Motorhead and us, like, when we meet up in London, it's chaos. That is it. It's like, I don't know, the Third World War, <laughs> really. It's, we've got, I, I suppose it's, um, we've got respect for each other, but, you know, it's, it's more like a friend's thing. So you don't really show respect in that way. It's just like, oh, hello, mate, how you doing? Let's have a drink and whatever. But I suppose we all respect each other, yeah, in a way. You guys have done incredibly well in the three years, like four years that you've been together. What's your master plan for world domination by Iron Maiden? Well, we just like extensive touring, basically. It's as simple as that. And we're picking up fans all the way, you know. Hopefully in sort of another two years extensive touring, they're going to be like a huge name, I hope. I really hope. But the thing is, I just hope everyone can turn around and say then, yeah, right, Iron Maiden's great, they're big now, but like, they ain't changed a bit since we first knew them.
our fans in Canada. This is Eddie from Iron Maiden. And I'd like to say to keep tuned to new music because girls' school are on their way. <laughs> 